the last known photos of the Romanov family have finally surfaced. The Romanovs, Russia's last royal dynasty, were assassinated soon after midnight on July 17, 1918, by a handful of Bolsheviks in the aftermath of the Russian Revolution. The tale of Anastasia, the youngest Romanov daughter, is perhaps the most well-known piece of Romanov legend. As time passed, the specifics of that fatal night became murkier, and the public started to doubt whether Anastasia, along with the rest of her family, had indeed died. Everything became much more complex when a lady claimed to be the long-lost Romanov daughter. The case was not even officially solved until 2018, precisely a century after the murder. This is the incredible historical tale of the Romanov family and their destiny on that fateful night in 1918. House of Romanov Beginning in 1613, the Romanovs were Russia's ruling dynasty for over 300 years. You may be familiar with the name of the first Tsar during that period, Ivan the Terrible, shown here. After he married his first wife, Anastasia Romanova, the family name rose to prominence. Members of the House of Romanov established Russia as a major international power via a succession of wars and reforms over the span of three centuries. Our tale starts with the Romanovs, the last royal Romanov family. Russia's Last Royals on November 26, 1894, Nicholas II married Princess Alex of Hesse, and the two became Tsar and Tsarina of the Russian Empire. Princess Alex assumed the Russian name Alexandra Fedorovna after marrying and converting to the Russian Orthodox Church. Nicholas's parents were Alexander III and Maria Fedorovna, and Alexandra was the granddaughter of Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. The Romanov Children Nicholas and Alexandra had five children, four girls, Olga, Tatiana, Maria, and Anastasia, and one boy, Alexei, the heir apparent. Despite being members of the royal dynasty, the Romanov children were raised in humble circumstances. They never received their regal titles, slept on uncomfortable beds with no mattresses, and took morning baths in icy water. Olga and Tatiana, the two elder sisters, were known as the big pair and shared a room, while Maria and Anastasia were known as the little pair. Atma was a common abbreviation for the four sisters. Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna After the birth of their fourth daughter, Anastasia, on June 18, 1901, Nicholas and Alexandra were moderately disappointed since they had hoped to have a male who would inherit the Russian Empire's throne. Nonetheless, Anastasia proved to be a unique youngster who stood out among her siblings. She was characterized as petite and plump, with blonde hair and blue eyes. Many people said she resembled her mother more than her father. A Prankster at Heart Anastasia was also a bit of a trickster and even had a cruel streak. Many people characterized her as gifted and bright, yet she was plainly disinterested in her education, preferring to play pranks on her instructors and staff. Anastasia was nasty to the point of being evil, a distant relative, Princess Nina Georgievna, remarked. She undoubtedly held the record for punishable deeds in her family, because in naughtiness she was a true genius, another family acquaintance added. A revolution draws near. But unhappy, the royal family's fortunes were about to plummet when civil turmoil erupted in the Russian Empire. Tsar Nicholas's popularity started to dwindle during this period for a variety of reasons, including the Russo-Japanese War and other significant military setbacks, his commitment to absolute autocratic control, and the suppression of political opponents. Protests over food rationing and general dissatisfaction with the monarchy erupted in Petrograd, modern-day St. Petersburg, on February 23, 1917 leading the Tsar to abdicate the throne soon afterwards. The Capture of the Romanov Family After Nicholas abdicated during the February Revolution, the Romanov family was placed under house arrest in the Alexander Palace, roughly 30 miles south of Petrograd, by the provisional government. However, in August, they were evacuated and relocated to the Siberian town of Tobolsk. A few months later, in October, the Bolsheviks' Red Army took over the government, an event known today as the October Revolution. They transferred the Romanovs once again in April 1918, 
this time to the Apatiev house in the Earl town of Yekaterinburg. Life at the Apatiev house. The Romanov's days in detention in the Apatiev house, shown here, began well as the youngsters devised inventive methods to keep themselves entertained. They put on performances for everyone in the house to witness, and the girls took on sewing tasks, including putting royal jewels into their outfits so their captors couldn't locate them. But as time passed, the Romanovs were pushed farther within the home, and they started to despair about their plight. The White Army Approaches At this moment, Russia was completely engulfed in a civil war. When the Bolsheviks learned that the opposing White Army was rapidly approaching Yekaterinburg, where the Romanovs were being held, they were faced with a dilemma. The larger and better equipped Whites were almost certain to defeat the Bolsheviks' Red Army, allowing the Romanovs to be freed and potentially return to power. As a result, they resolved to do the unimaginable. The Romanovs meet their gruesome fate. Yakov Yurovsky, shown here, the chief of the Bolshevik secret police, woke up the Romanov family and their servants just after midnight on July 17, 1918, and instructed them to get dressed quickly so they could be relocated to a safer place. They then picked them up in a basement chamber of the Apatiev house, informing them that they were shooting a group portrait to dispel reports that they had fled. After a few moments, Yurovsky entered the chamber and told the Tsar that he and his family were going to be killed by shooting, and with that, all of the Romanovs were dead within 20 minutes. The Aftermath When the White Army landed in Yekaterinburg, they discovered that the Romanovs had mysteriously vanished. A few days later, the Bolsheviks openly acknowledged to executing Tsar Nicholas, but stated that the remainder of the family had been sent to an unidentified, secure place. The people became doubtful that the Bolsheviks had really saved any lives that night, but considering that no remains had been retrieved at this time, it appeared plausible that someone had survived. They had no idea that the complete truth would not be exposed for another century. Did a Romanov daughter survive? Rumors started to circulate that one of the Romanov girls had really escaped the basement chamber alive on that dreadful July night. And between 1918 and 1928, a slew of women claimed to be Anastasia, otherwise known as the heir to the Romanov wealth. The majority of these accusations were immediately debunked, but one lady, identified as Anna Anderson, was about to throw the whole case on its head. Miss Unknown A young lady who refused to identify her identity was transferred to a psychiatric institution in Germany in 1920. She went six months without speaking and had no identity, giving her the moniker Miss Unknown. After six months, she started speaking, with a Russian accent no less. Clara Poithert, a fellow patient at the hospital, felt Mrs. Unknown was a lost Romanov daughter, especially Tatiana. Clara went out to discover Miss Unknown's identity as soon as she was discharged from the hospital. Could she be Tatiana? Clara contacted a number of Russian expatriates who had previously interacted with the Romanov family and invited them to meet Miss Unknown in person. Almost all of them were sure that Miss Unknown was a Romanov daughter, despite the fact that she seldom interacted with any of the guests, never confirming or denying her identity. Despite this, all of the guests were immediately persuaded that the likeness was so great that she could possibly be Tatiana Romanova. The objections came flooding in. However, opposition to Miss Unknown's apparent identification as a Romanov daughter rapidly poured in. The first came from former Tsarina lady-in-waiting, Baroness Sophie Huxovedin. The Baroness looked at Miss Unknown and realized that, although she resembled Tatiana, she was far too short to be her. I never said I was Tatiana, Miss Unknown, who had scarcely talked to any of the people who had been brought to her, remarked. Anna Anderson Miss Unknown's ambiguous response fueled speculations that she was still a Romanov daughter, just not Tatiana. Captain Nicholas von Schwab, the Dowager Empress's bodyguard, then paid a visit to the mental institution. He presented Miss Unknown with a list of the Romanov girls' names, and she crossed off all of them save Anastasia. Miss Unknown was thereafter referred to as Anna Anderson. Anna's release from the mental hospital Anna Anderson was ultimately freed from the psychiatric institution in 1922 after being hospitalized for two years. 
She faced inquiries over the ensuing years from both skeptics and those who believed she was the long-lost Romanov daughter. She spoke with numerous extended Romanov family members and shared details that only the actual Anastasia could have known, not to mention the uncanny physical similarity between the two. Anna meets Gleb Botkin. Anna Anderson met Romanov family doctor Yevgeny Botkin's son, Gleb, in 1927. From their first encounter, Gleb was certain Anna was Anastasia and became her strongest supporter. He engaged New York City attorney Edward Fallows to assist her. Legally becoming Anastasia Romanova would give her access to the Romanov family's money, and the case became the longest in German court history. Physical and Mental Assessments Forensic analysts compared Anna to Anastasia throughout the case. Up until the scar from Anastasia's mole removal, they were practically similar. Such a coincidence between two human faces is not possible unless they are the same person or identical twins, stated renowned anthropologist and criminologist Dr. Otto Resch. Anna's psychological checkup reportedly revealed no mental problems. It seems impossible that her knowledge of many small details is due to anything other than her own personal experience, stated Dr. Lothar Nobel. A Failing Memory For every individual who believed Anna Anderson was Anastasia, many were skeptical for various reasons. Real Anastasia spoke English, French, and Russian, but Anna Anderson hardly spoke any of them. Anna and her supporters responded that she had a recurring mental disorder that affected her memory. The Romanov family's money was still at risk, therefore the war continued. Case Closed a German court dismissed Anna Anderson's complaint in 1970 due to a lack of evidence. How do I introduce myself? In what way? Can you tell me that? Said Anna Anderson in 1978. Can you show me who you are? Whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. Anna Anderson died of pneumonia in 1984, claiming to be Anastasia Romanova, the Duchess of Mecklenburg, who inherited the Romanov wealth.